Well, this is not the update I wanted to come back onto YouTube with. It's been like three weeks, I think, since the last garden update. And since then, a lot has changed. Um, I've just not had the energy to talk to myself and walk around the garden for you. Um, yeah, it's just been crazy. But anyways, over Christmas, which was yesterday, um, Christmas weekend, we had like a crazy freeze. It was 23 degrees on Sunday morning and 25 degrees on Saturday morning. And that's not too common for this part of Florida. Um, so it hit pretty darn hard. We had the irrigation on in the nursery to kind of uh, get some ice on the crops or on the nursery stock to help insulate them and get them through the freeze. But it just, it looked like Switzerland at some points. It was pretty crazy. Um, I was debating on whether or not to irrigate the garden and I kind of chose not to, but then uh, got home late uh, what was it Friday night I went fishing with Pete and yeah I got home late and didn't think to double check the timer on the garden and I apparently forgot that I had it set for uh, to come on at five for five minutes at 6 a.m. Um, and I set that like two weeks ago I haven't needed to irrigate in a while and I guess I forgot and uh, see so yeah, I didn't ever double check the timer and the timer kicked on 6 a.m. for five minutes when it was 25 degrees out and covered the crops in ice real quick. And that did a lot of damage. Um, but then the 25 degrees alone gave the plants some decent amount of frost damage. The other garden by the entrance, um, that didn't get irrigation. It's not on the same timer. It has about half the amount of damage so it's it was coming either way um, and two nights in a row at those temperatures it sucks um, I didn't have row covers on the garden for that whole little freezing episode um, most of the row covers were on the nursery stock kind of prioritize that stuff it's worth more than a vegetable um, so and it just would have been a headache to get everything covered all those uh, frost blankets are all different sizes and just it would have been a mess um, plus the winds picked up and yeah it just wasn't gonna happen um, so with that said I lost a lot um, yeah I don't know I'm, just, I'm probably just gonna take you through and let you see the damage. I'm in the middle of cropping out and I figured oh, I might as well grab the, grab the camera so you guys can see the reality of farming. Um, what really sucks is even if I had row covers on stuff, it still wouldn't have kept it warm enough because I think, I think it's Saturday. So in six, seven days, so, yeah, whatever, um, later this week it's gonna be close to 80 degrees. And so going from 23 degrees to almost 80 degrees, I think it's gonna be 78, um, that's, that alone will cause crops to just bolt, think it's spring and say, hey, I'm going to seed, winter's over. And I would have lost a lot anyways. So cropping everything out now, uh, when it comes to stuff like Salanova, the centers, don't look as bad as the outer leaves so I think I'm just gonna cut it back like I har would harvest it and see if I get any regrowth um, but after next or after later this week with the temperatures that might bolt pretty quick too but if I get one more cropping out of it and can get that to market or do like on-farm pickup or something every little bit counts at this point um, so yeah. Also, a lot of my seedlings had them move too. Um, they just got too cold. Uh, we'll see what comes back from them. I'm just going to leave them and see how they recover. But I'm planning on just starting everything over again. Like, 
Yeah. And I'm gonna hope that we don't get another crazy frost by the time spring rolls around. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna try and find some row cover too, just in case, because I mean, I guess it'll help a little bit, but here's the garden. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty bright out. Hopefully the camera's picking it up okay. Um, if not, I'll just deal with it. <laughs> um, so the cilantro and bunching onion, they love the cold. They're like a cooler weather crop anyways. They thrived. There's no damage whatsoever there. The spinach, that likes a little bit of cold, but doesn't really like 23 degrees with ice on the leaves. So that took a little bit of damage. After this week, we'll see. It might even bolt. Um, it's looking really good right now, but we'll see. Um, this bed has just been a headache since the beginning. Um, initially, and it, what did I seed first? Initially, I put carrots here, seeded, direct seeded carrots. They didn't come up, so I seeded over top of them with another bed or a variety of carrot. They barely came up, and that was newer seed, so I don't know what the deal is there. And then uh, direct seeded beets there, and they sucked. And then three or four days before the freeze came, I transplanted Tokyo Bacana. It's an Asian green. It's really good. I like to use it like you would broccoli. Uh, technically, people harvest it for the greens, but I like to let it flower and harvest little shoots are super sweet but anyways that got taken out so i just really don't like that bed right now um this entire bed of salanova got hit hard um let's see if we can zoom down here the leaves are just they're not gonna recover but like i said the centers look okay so i'll just cut all that back like i would when i harvest and I'll probably get one or two more, well, we'll just, we'll call it one and just be lucky with that harvest out of this whole bed. Um, like I said, it's probably going to bolt. All of my arugula, which I've been harvesting a ton out of, um, it's been in the ground since October 21st when I direct seeded it. Um, I've gotten a lot of crops and harvests or whatever out of this bed, so... It is what it is. I've gotten my money's worth out of it. Um, this bed of carrots. Tops look a little rough, but I'm sure the carrots do great. They they actually kind of like the cold. They only get sweeter. Um, this was a bed, bed of carrots, but they never germinated. Still don't know what the deal is there. Um, that bed of carrots did great. This bed of fennel. It looked amazing. And I've been harvesting for the last three weeks for market out of it and the freeze just turned everything it, I don't know how brown it looks in the camera but the tops look gross um, so I'll I don't know I'll see what I can recover out of that um, just planted this like a week and a half ago uh, this was Napa cabbages two rows on the sides with two rows of uh, what are those radishes down the middle they all got fried um let's see the collard greens they got hit hard collards normally do pretty darn good through the frost but like i don't know if the camera will pick it up right now the leaves are just they look thrashed but i'm sure they'll regrow and they'll be fine um this uh red tabby spinach didn't do too hot that got a decent amount of damage that's all back there. It's just Salanova. Same deal with the other bed. Um, my Mizuna, gone. There's nothing left. Uh, just some slimy crop residue. That'll be ripped out today. Uh, the cabbages, they took a beating back there. They were looking good. Um, the freezing temperatures made a lot of them explode, actually. Um, the outer leaves are all slimy now, so I'll get what I can out of that and probably just turn it all into um, sauerkraut or something. Uh, what is this? Spate? No, this is seaside spinach. Um, that did okay. There's some, there's some leaves that look kind of rough, but it, it did all right. Um, this bed of arugula, which was my next succession for the other bed over there. 
that's gone. Uh, this was spinach and radishes interplanted every other row. Uh, spinach is okay, but it's been a little stunted. Um, I don't know what the deal is. I think it got some form of alternaria on it, and it just kind of failed to thrive from early on. Um, I guess they've been planted. Let me look at the tag. They were planted November 24th, so short daylight hours. They grow slow anyways, but anyways, that whole bed's pretty much gone. Broccoli, it looks thrashed, but I'm sure it'll come around. Um, there's still a bunch of heads in there. I'll get them harvested. It's another bed of carrots. Great germination, but kind of failure to thrive deal again. Um, like I said, short daylight hours will do it. Uh, red Russian kale. It got hit pretty good. All these lettuces, there's a bunch of different varieties. All the outer leaves in the tips, they all got frostbite, basically. Um, we'll see if my seed on these lettuce heads that I let go to seed, I have four, or, yeah, four varieties that I've been trying to let mature. We'll see what I get out of those. I don't know how they're gonna do. I've never saved seed through the winter and I've never had them get hit with frost, but I guess we'll find out how they do. Um, a lot of them had so much ice growing on them that they just snapped, like these two. So that sucks. You can see the moles. I have one mole. I was out here this morning. I saw him pushing some dirt out of this mound and I ran and grabbed the shotgun and I was gonna blast him, but he ran away by the time I got back out here. I haven't seen him since, but I'm gonna get him one of these days. I've had traps set for months, and for whatever reason, the moles in Florida, I guess, dig too deep, and then they have these vents that they push the dirt out of, which is different than the ones I was trapping in Washington. And uh, yeah, they've just been a challenge, but I'm gonna get him one of these days. Uh, White Russian kale did okay. Um, Salanova under it that was stunted in the beginning just because the foliage from the red rush or the white Russian kale just shaded it out a little bit but over time I've pruned the plants up during each harvest and there were catching up but they got hit pretty good too with the frost Swiss chard that's gone it might send some shoots up from the center again but at this point I've struggled with this bed of Swiss chard since the beginning, and uh, I think I'm just gonna crop it out. I've only harvested maybe tw maybe 30 bunches out of it, and it's been in the ground since, let's see, I think early October, so I'm just done with it. Um, and whatever does recover, it's not really gonna be enough to make it worth keeping that bed. Lassonado did okay. Spinach under that did okay. These carrots, they did great. I've sold a ton of carrots at market so far. They're, they sell out like so fast. Um, this Lassonado did okay. The Totsoy I planted on the sides is gone. Um, this uh, Salanova, I planted a day, maybe two days before the freeze. I don't know if it was Thursday or must have been I think I planted that on Wednesday so three days before the freeze um, I've been doing a dunk or a drench every time I transplant lately and as soon as the plants hit the ground they take off there's no transplant shock and they grow so much faster than any of my other plants that I've planted without doing the drench in my compost tea um, everything okay so let's let's go this way Everything has gotten a dose of my compost tea, whether it's a foliar feed, like spraying it on the crops right after I plant them, or doing this dunking method. I experimented with the dunking method in Washington a bit and had great success, but I just don't know why I didn't do it since the beginning here. Um, but anyways, got back into it. So every time I transplant, I just dunk transplant and then plant it. Um, so it inoculates the roots and the top with a decent amount of compost tea. And then it just, it, like I said, it thrives. There is zero frost damage on these transplants. Like I said, they went in three days before the freeze. So 
all that I can think of is that the tea gave the plants enough strength and boosted them up with like some super juice basically that made them pull through and that they just look amazing it's like the nicest thing in the garden right now um so i'm excited about that because they're gonna i don't think that they're gonna bolt with the heat coming up i think they're young enough that they should be able to pull through the heat and keep growing but i guess we'll see um this bed was planted a week before and it also did really good the tips of some of these plants on the salanova um they got a little frostbite but i also think they're gonna react the same way these guys do and they'll pull through um so maybe in i don't know two and a half three weeks i'll be harvesting out of them as long as they don't bolt and uh down the center of that is a new new row of lacinato um i needed a bit more this was all cauliflower. It's gone. Like, I planted this a week ago. Uh, the frost took it out. This was a whole bed of uh, Mizuna. I just cropped that out. It's all in here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all in here. Real slimy. Gross. Starting to stink already. This is a... Uh... Oh, he's going to get mad at me. My buddy Brian, who owns Bridgetown Garden Tools in Portland, Oregon. Um... He's awesome. His company is amazing. The tools they sell are amazing. Um, I've actually got a coupon code for this. I think it's Eden15. I'm going to double check and put it on the screen. Um, if I forget to put it on the screen, it's because it is Eden15. <laughs> um, anyways, this is, uh, I, think, I think he's calling this one the Handy Hoe. Um, but I like using this one for cropping out direct seeded crops. Um, it just slices the roots off, and I just skim the surface of the soil. I guess I can show you. Um, let's see. So it just sits flat, kind of like a hula hoe or a um, <clears throat> scuffle hoe or whatever you want to call them. Um, but this little handheld one is amazing, and I just kind of go like that, pretend there's a whole row of plants. I'd go right down the row at an angle slices the roots off the biology in the soil gets to enjoy those and build more soil and then i can be nice and picky and make sure the whole bed's clean and that does not take long to crop out this entire 50 foot bed that took i don't know not even five minutes just doing it by hand um, i'll go through rake that out amend it and then put a new layer of compost down and It'll wait until it's ready to be planted. Like I said, I have to start all new seeds. Um, we'll see what recovers. That Some of that might actually go out here. We'll see. Another bed is of uh, Salanova. Again, I'm just going to harvest this all out and hope that there's some regrowth that I can salvage. And then some parsley on the sides. And they did, they did good. Parsley does pretty good through the cold. I also had lettuce planted all the way down the front of the garden um it's two different varieties i alternated the colors i was like oh this will look good for christmas it's red and green and whatever and it did look good for christmas and then the christmas weather just killed it so well it's not dead but again we'll see how it could well, how it does um i guess we'll look at the stars real quick everything some stuff like beets, they're gone. They're already turning slimy. Um, hot soy's turning slimy. Everything else is just a little in shock. But, I mean, seedlings are normally pretty tough. They did freeze solid, though. But, yeah. So there's that. I'll run you over to the entrance garden and then maybe give you an update on the Centropic area in a second. So I'll be right back. All right, so we'll see how it goes. Neighbors' dogs are out and they drive me nuts. The entrance garden, it was kind of stunted. I did a dose of my compost tea. Everything took off. Um, still growing a little slow after the frost. Um, it's gonna need some time to recover. Like I said, not as much damage here. Um, this dogs are gonna drive me nuts when I walk away. Not as much damage here. But because of the lack of irrigation. But we'll see how they do after this next week when it's close to 80. Anyways, compost tea saved the day with that thing. One more batch and I think it'll really take off. But 
I'll take you to the tropic area now. So, I was over by the other garden and I realized that I didn't turn the mic around. So hopefully you guys can hear me in that clip. Um, I guess we'll find out. Anyways, if you didn't, if you couldn't hear me, stuff did okay. Compost tea saved the day. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's growing. Um, not too much frost damage over there. Same with over here. There's not so much frost damage, but there's also not a lot of crop growing. Um, so there's a whole bed of lettuce. Uh, the front quarter is Salanova, and then the back three quarters is uh, Jericho Romaine. And I either had a bug, or I might be thinking it's a rabbit now. Um, anyway, something came in and just ate a ton of transplants right after I planted them. Um, I haven't had anything really eat anything out of the main garden. So if it was a rabbit, I'm kind of shocked that it's not been over there and just decimating like the whole bed of Salanova that's right on the edge. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I did see rabbit droppings in the grass over here the other morning. So it could be the rabbit. Um, I don't know. Something's, something's being a pest, uh, but I'll get that figured out eventually. Hawk ride turnips, they're doing okay. Not taking off too much. Um, haven't done any compost tea over here, so I guess I'll need to do a dose and see if things take off again. Um, but this was an amazing bed of spinach, direct seeded, and the rabbit in one night, maybe it was a whole family of rabbits or something, I don't know, um, went through and ate all the seedlings. All you see is little tiny stubbles, about not even a quarter inch tall. You can still see the green just because I planted pretty thick. Um, don't look at this. This is just kind of me getting rid of old seed and seeing what it did. It's actually bush beans. They didn't even, maybe one or two of the bush beans on the edge got some frost damage. Everything else looks good though, but they're not really going to be that productive. Um, this is half a bed from about right there. This way is Mizuna and the back half is Arugula. Not much frost damage there, but again, it's cotyledons with one true leaf, so they're normally really tough. Um, but then there's nothing else planted in the rest of the Centropic Garden. Bananas in here, they look gross. They're already brown. Um, these guys that I can't remember the name of, um, they're nitrogen fixer. They're fried. They'll come back, but the green growth on it is dead. A um, little bit of cassava that's left is all gross looking. But anyways. Alright, so I know this video is getting kind of old. Or old. It's getting kind of long. Um, but before I go, I do want to talk about this real quick. Um, I am experimenting. I have been experimenting. Um, with a dry compost tea bag. So everybody, everybody has been asking me for my compost tea recipe. It's changed a lot since the old video I did a couple years back at Paul's. Um, I've added stuff, I've taken stuff away, I've tweaked the recipe quite a bit, and it'll always change. Um, but I really like how it is right now. So I'd like to keep it pretty similar um, but anyways I'm offering or I will be offering could be taking orders after this video um, I'm pretty much ready to just start going with it uh, but anyways making dry compost tea bags um, this is an awesome little burlap sack uh, so there's enough compost tea ingredients in this to make 10 gallons of tea now for this entire garden, 6,500 square feet, I only use four to five gallons of compost tea to treat it. Um, and as a whole, since the beginning of the season in September, when I first planted the first stuff out in the garden, I think in total, I've put maybe 30 gallons of tea down and I've gotten so much produce out of it, so much growth garden looks amazing um, so it doesn't really take much compost tea so 
I think I'm going to do a whole video on this to kind of market it or whatever. Um, but if this is something you guys would be interested in, let me know in the comments. Um, still trying to figure out what the best price is for it. So I got to mix each bag individually. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to get a stamp made with my logo and stamp all of the bags just to make it look good. Um, but that's not necessarily like essential to start selling these guys. Um, what's nice is like I said, you get two batches of tea out of it. Um, it's ideal to do one five gallon batch one night um, and then the next the next day or do one concentrated batch one five gallon concentrated batch uh, then dilute that spread that over your garden and then use the remaining stuff mix it with some water and just water it in around a tree or around some crops that aren't doing too good um, but anyways I'll make a whole video on this how to use it and how to get a hold of it um, so yeah stay tuned for that that'll probably be the next video that comes out um, but I guess with all that said, there's the update and, uh, I'm going to get to work cropping out some stuff and probably starting some seeds this afternoon. So happy gardening. God bless. Hope you had a good Christmas. Hope you stayed warm. It's probably warmer here than the rest of the country, um, over the last weekend, but cold enough to still do damage. So anyways. Till next time, have fun, happy gardening, God bless again.